Why is this still uncleared? What makes this so hard? It took a year and a half to clear 15,000 levels. How did we get into such a dire situation? An online game played by millions is at the brink of a complete and total collapse. The millions of levels made for it potentially lost to time forever. And if it isn't for the work of some of the most skilled Mario players the game has ever seen, we could see a world where the game is never fully beaten. How could things get this bad? On the 15th of May 2006, New Super Mario Bros. was released to the world. Shortly after release, the game was met warmly to near universal praise. Since 1996, the Mario series had transitioned to the third dimension. It was a breakthrough for both the Mario series and gaming as a whole. Many would even consider the game to be perfect. But over time, fans began to worry that the tried and true 2D format was a tired concept. Despite the third dimension breaking down several technological barriers, some players had grown devoted to the older games and yearned for another simple 2D experience. At least that was, until this game. Hello, this is Utopic182. I'm gonna do my unboxing of my new special edition Mario Red DS. Fans were finally able to play a new Super Mario Bros. game. Then, they played another, and another, and another. And all of a sudden, the games weren't as new as first expected. In fact, they got stale. It also doesn't the 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 By the end of 2012, Nintendo had made slight variations of the same game on four separate occasions. So it only made sense for them to begin streamlining the process, making a tool to simplify the creation of levels. At E3 2014, this tool was instead introduced as a new game. Super Mario Maker was announced to the world and released on September 10th, 2015. Instead of making the next new Super Mario Bros, the power was given to the players to make their own game with endless possibilities. While some fans have already been making their own levels in the past through the use of ROM hacks, with entire communities forming around them, never before were fans given the ease of access for anyone to be a level designer. It was the end-all be-all solution to 2D Mario fans everywhere. It's been over 8 years since then, and Mario Maker hasn't been in the best place. The launch of the Wii U wasn't exactly perfect. It didn't sell anywhere near as much as Nintendo initially expected. It was an underpowered system that had too much of its budget dedicated to a fancy new controller that the best games didn't even use. Mechanically, the Wii U wasn't competing with the Xbox One or PS4, it was competing with the 360 and PS3 and losing at that, Nintendo had hoped that they could coast off the success of the Wii. But by then, the fad had died down. In turn, they desperately tried to appeal to hardcore gamers. But the weak hardware meant that third-party developers couldn't port games to the system, so the system didn't get modern games. The Wii U was practically dead on arrival. While it took after the casual-friendly Wii, it seemed the only people willing to play it were the hardcore Nintendo fans. It was promptly replaced by their next console, years before the rest of the competition. The Switch quickly became Nintendo's main priority, and everyone moved on to New Frontiers. Well, not everyone. Even though Nintendo had moved on, the Wii would maintain a small but dedicated cult following, including the formation of a ragtag group of Mario Maker players with a shared goal. Team 0% was founded in December 2017 by a Mario Maker player simply named Jeffy. At this point in time, Team 0% had a lot in common with the console they were playing on. The group was niche and largely unnoticed by the general community. Their goal was simple, seeing through the completion of every single level from 2015. While there were only three months worth of material, being the initial launch months of the game, there were still a lot of levels to play through. 14,790 to be exact. They achieved this by maintaining a list of levels they would update manually. Despite the monumentality of the task, they would ultimately achieve their goal on August 12th, 2018. Three months of uncleared levels completed in only eight months. But with the Wii U left in the past, Mario Maker would surely follow. Like many other Wii U games, Mario Maker would get a replacement on Switch. The more in-depth Super Mario Maker 2. Whoa! Slopes! And with the pieces in place, the Wii U was no longer needed. 
immediately fading from the public eye. After completing their initial goal, many members of Team 0% would transition to playing the sequel casually, with many others falling out with the series entirely. Every other year would have had many more levels than those in the first three months, and completing all of them would prove to be insurmountable. Many had already moved on to greener pastures, not expecting to beat any more years worth of levels. Eventually, years after the Wii U was forgotten, Nintendo announced that they would disable the uploading of levels on March 31st, 2021. With this announcement, Team 0% would return to the game, newly reinvigorated to claim their lost dream. With no more levels being uploaded, Mario Maker could feasibly be beaten, with no uncleared levels remaining. And that marks the start of their most ambitious mission yet. They wanted to have a clear on every single Mario Maker level. At the time, there were about 48,000 uncleared levels. During their completion of the ones from 2015, they cleared about 15,000 in 8 months. But it's been a long time since 2018, and previously dedicated members now have more important things to do. Not to mention, level creators had improved a lot over the last 9 years. A hard level from 2015 isn't even comparable to the levels made when people started mastering the game, but there were a handful of things that made clearing through the levels easier. In January of 2023, member The Krypton would develop a Discord bot API to more easily track the completion of levels. This marks the start of the modern era of Team 0%, and all of a sudden, their goal didn't seem so impossible. Over the following months, the previously shorthanded list of skilled players blossomed into a full movement, and if their mission were to be followed through, the completion of Mario Maker would be one of the most incredible group efforts in all of gaming. On the 8th of July 2023, Team 0% would go public and open their Twitter account, where they revealed to the world the true scope of the project. 33,600 levels still needed to be beat. Not all of these levels were particularly challenging. There were some that had gone under the radar, levels people didn't feel like completing due to an annoying mechanic, RNG, unfun troll levels, and narrow timers. But of course, at the peak of the mountain, there would sit some of the most challenging, nail-biting, infuriating levels that would ever be played. By now, it had been a few years since Nintendo removed uploading from Mario Maker. The writing was already on the wall, but with this next announcement, the message was made clear. The ending date of the Wii U's online altogether was to be on April 8th, 2024. In exactly 184 days, a little over half a year, Mario Maker would go offline forever. By October, less than 26,000 levels remained. They were going at an immaculate pace, 7,600 levels in a span of only about 3 months. But if they continued at that rate, they'd undoubtedly be blocked by the deadline. Something needed to change. And thankfully, something did. In response to Nintendo's announcement, YouTube user the Riley C would post a video titled We Need Your Help to Complete Mario Maker, which would quickly become his most popular upload, shining a light on the mission and raising awareness. If you own a Wii U and Mario Maker, boot up the game, and try to beat just one or two levels. At this point, the primary struggle was the sheer amount of Mario that needed to be played. Now is probably a good time to explain what makes fully completing Mario Maker so difficult. The game is divided into four separate styles, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, Super Mario World, and New Super Mario Bros. Each of these games allow for different mechanics and movement options. Mario World and New Suit both have spin jumping for instance, but New Suit includes many of the movement options from the 3D games for added variety, like the triple jump and wall sliding. This makes mastering every style next to impossible. Because of this, experts of certain games would drop what they're doing to join the cause. Kaizo experts in Mario World would transition to completing Kaizo levels in Mario Maker. Some of the world's best Super Mario players and speedrunners would devote thousands of combined hours to examining and dismantling as many uncleared levels as they could. With the community formed, players who weren't equipped to play the levels themselves would spend their time scrubbing over every piece of data possible and would devote their time to categorizing and strategizing to help the players route the levels. Mario Maker thankfully allows for the player to download and edit any level uploaded, and while it was designed to allow the player to play levels offline, downloads also allow for the player to view it in the editing menu to reverse engineer the techniques implemented. This would help to reveal possible dev exits, and to find cheese. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about cheese. 
in Mario Maker, cheese just means to skip through a part of the level in a way that wasn't intended by the designer. Like jumping past a section, breaking walls with bombs, or utilizing invincibility frames to rush past certain sections. Cheese was crucial to beating every level, as by playing how the designers intended, they would be stuck playing by the designers' rules. Rules that would only get stricter as the difficulty increased. But as more levels continued to be beaten, a new problem was soon to surface. To upload a level, the uploader first has to clear it themselves to ensure it's possible. But over the years, hackers have been able to upload impossible levels through the use of several different exploits. Thankfully, a majority of these stages have been deleted by Nintendo, and some were even able to be beaten legitimately through the use of new tech. Phantom jumps and other patch techniques retroactively made levels designed around them impossible. As all of these levels were literally unable to be beaten, these levels were to be reported to Nintendo, then promptly ignored. Even without having to worry about hacked levels, another concern for 0% was ensuring that everything was done fairly. Sometimes, hackers would take the first clear and expert Mario Maker levels, so a subset of 0% would try to beat these levels anyways. When a hacker is banned, their level completion time is set to 99 minutes, 59 seconds, and 999 milliseconds to ensure they wouldn't be stealing the record, so anyone beating it fairly would easily claim it. Thanks to the influx of players and fans coming from the Riley C video, and others like it, thousands were able to get involved and began clearing tens of thousands of levels. But by now, there were only about a thousand left. The low-hanging fruit had already been picked, leaving only the levels at the peak of the mountain. Each of the following levels could have wasted weeks worth of combined efforts. Here are just a handful. Divide and Conquer is the most complicated puzzle level the game has ever seen, with some even making the claim that you need a computer science degree to clear it. It was made by Helga Fan, who's also known to have made a functioning calculator with Mario Maker. I honestly have no idea what's going on here. The puzzle is explained in a video by its creator, and honestly, I'm still completely lost. It was first beaten on January 27th, 2024 by Nick Bygone. Beast Needle is a level very deserving of its name. This monstrous atrocity is what's known as a precision level. This is a five minute long torture session where the player is tasked with navigating some of the tightest obstacles in the game. The level largely consists of these tight corridors, filled to the brim with jumps that, if uploaded on their own, could easily fall in the top 1000 in difficulty. Every jump is worse than the last, with the player having to thread the needle with each and every jump. Never in my life will I ever want to see any more spikes and munchers. Watching the clear video by KingBoo97, there are moments that leave me on the edge of my seat and pain me just to watch. And the whole level is full of these jumps. Many theorize that this level wasn't even uploaded legitimately, but if you think that was too close, this is only the beginning. While Beast Needle has a variety of stress-inducing sections, the hardest muncher stairs is a level that only requires one trick. 360 times in a row. This level is just cruel. It involves the player having to perfectly navigate incredibly tight munchers. Go a few pixels too high, you run into the top row of munchers. A few too low, and you fall into the bottom. And you can't go through it slowly, as you're forced forward by the foreboding time limit. This level is a giant endurance round. Make one mistake, and you're sent all the way back to the start to do it again. And because of the precision, the winning attempt of this level took 8 full minutes to beat, after an immeasurable amount of attempts beforehand. In Bloom, as well as consisting of some tricky platforming, was a level dedicated to the Fire Flower. Specifically, an interesting piece of tech that comes along with them. It was uploaded all the way back in 2019, remaining unbeaten thanks to its niche use of uncommon mechanics. While it was attempted by Fritzif upon release, the level's use of wall jumping while carrying POW blocks and other complicated and tight-knit platforming helped it to remain out of reach. That's not even mentioning the highlight of the level being the forgotten tech of fire flower climbing. By shooting a fireball directly after wall jumping, it removes Mario from the wall jump state, allowing for the player to return to the wall and continue climbing. But after being up for nearly five years, it was completed on February 27th, 2024, when Fritzif returned to finish what he had started. Chaco's 500 second speedrun was at one point believed to be the hardest level. In fact, it very well still might be. Utilizing all of NSMB Mario's movement options, to nerve-wracking spike segments, platforming while holding items, shell jumping, and many other advanced techniques, 
This was a level that stretches the confines of what's possible, with one second of hesitation forcing you to restart the entire level due to the relentless and unforgiving timer. When Mario Maker levels make it to the highest level, it becomes somewhat of a game of Simon Says. The original level creator designs these intricate sets of obstacles, and due to the time limit, the player is forced into replaying it with the same inputs. Looking at the finished run by Tatsu1236, better known as Norway in the 0% Discord server, comparing it to the original you could see exactly what I mean. Overlaying the recordings, they seem to line up almost perfectly, with one big exception. After grinding out the level for god knows how long, cheese had finally been discovered. This section here was able to skip a carefully timed jump onto Yoshi, as well as some scary platforming with invincibility frames. Altogether, it saved a full 11 seconds, time that was desperately needed by the end of things. Again, each and every one of these levels on their own had a very real possibility of ending the run, but the levels were nothing compared to some of the top players. Take this section just as a brief overview, as it'd be impossible to go over everyone. Fritz Ziff is a player who's been with the movement since the very beginning, helping to clear a massive chunk of their initial 2015 clearing, before getting demotivated at the prospect of playing any more years worth of levels. Since then, he returned to the first game, picking off even more levels as an invaluable member of the team. The Beast 721 is a streamer as dedicated as he is entertaining. In 2019, he cleared a level called The Amusement Park, one of the most difficult New Super Mario Bros. U levels in the game. This is a level that's been attempted over 123,600 times. After attempting the stage for over 37 hours, it all led up to this. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Remember, only 20 of the 100,000 attempts were successful. King Boo 97 is a Mario speedrunner and extraordinaire previously holding several Mario 3D world records before transitioning to Mario Maker 2, where he'd take world records there. But when the clock started ticking, he turned back to Mario Maker 1, beating some of the hardest levels the game has to offer, like Beast Needle for instance. Lil Curbs is a Mario Maker player you've likely already heard of, but for the uninitiated, he's a YouTuber and streamer known for his insane Mario Maker accomplishments, and definitely didn't steal the record on Bowser's Big Bean Burrito. Lately, he's been attempting some of the most impossibly difficult levels for Team 0%. Sanix91 is a French Super Mario Maker 2 player, primarily known in the community for playing tough Super Mario World levels, specifically ones that require throwing things mid-jump, like shells or springs. With the rise of 0%, he would take his skills back to the first game, where he would attempt a very specific level we'll go over later. Yamada seems to be a newer zero percenter, at least judging by their publicly available clear videos, but don't let that fool you. This player specializes in a certain type of level, one littered across the list of the hardest remaining, the incredibly cluttered New Super Mario Bros. speedruns. They can best be described as a human task, able to play the game with such precision that even the most convoluted New Super levels don't stand a chance. Each and everyone on this list is a little insane. After all, the only people who could clear levels made by maniacs is to become one themselves. And with a cast like this determined to beating these levels, they didn't even break the top 10. Speaking of... On the 12th of March, the Riley C would post another update to Team 0%. The list had now shortened to less than 50 levels remaining. By the time the video went public, they had made it to the final 10. Two Super Mario Bros, seven new Super Mario Bros, and one Mario World. And out of them, nine were Japanese and one non-Japanese. The list looked as follows. Happy New Year by Kuki0408. One of the most chaotic and disorienting levels with so many moving parts on the screen that it's difficult to even begin talking about it. The level surrounds Mario with so many enemies and effects that navigation is near impossible at first glance. After breaking down the platforming, narrowly avoiding circles of ghosts and using POW blocks to clear munchers, the player is faced with lowering a donut block with a wiggler on it, using iframes to narrowly enter a door in the nick of time. Even after all that, there's a scarily dense 50 second timer forcing the player to continue rushing through without hesitating. Next is number 9, The Last Dance by Creator06. This is another incredibly difficult Nusoup level, 
One that pulls out every trick in the book, from P-switch jumps, to POW blocks, to shell jumps, all interconnected in a massive juggling act. The level is absolutely littered in spikes, with fire flowers and stars strewn about in unreachable areas, constantly taunting the player. Platforming with POW blocks and other held items is incredibly difficult, as Mario's movement options are limited while holding it. There are several sections when you need to throw the POWs at the perfect moment, with increasingly elaborate setups. While a few pieces of cheese have been found in the beginning and end of the level, putting it all together will serve to be a challenge. Number 8 is Einherjar, again by Kukio408. This is yet another New Super Mario Bros. level. This one is best described as a labyrinth of saw blades, spikes, and munchers placed in exactly the wrong areas. Progression of this level almost seems non-linear. The player needs to collect 5 coins to enter a key door while navigating the unforgiving terrain of the level. Number 7. Phantom Odd World by 65535.jp. This is a shorter level, but one that forces some of the most condensed play the game has ever seen. Notice that the words in the name spell a very familiar acronym. POW. Remember when I explained that POW blocks are hard to platform with? Well, just looking at the footage here, it's clear that this is only the beginning. In this level, the player is forced to narrowly avoid death at every turn, using POW blocks to clear the way ahead, in a fashion that can best be described as a juggling act. Like many of the other top levels, there's an incredibly tight timer with even more narrow platforming. Number 6. A Japanese level which translates to Last Hope. This one seems to be another new Super Mario Bros. speedrun level. Like the others, it requires lightning-fast inputs and careful routing. Even the beginning of the level requires the player to make a split-second wall jump just to clear the first obstacle. Number 5 is another Japanese level, translating to A Crazy Man Flying Through the Air While Spinning, by Or Laurel Laurel Laurel. The key mechanic of this one is spin jumping, of the ultra-precise variety. It's clear the level was designed with a specific path, with enemies falling down to perfectly save Mario at the needed times. The player needs to collect 10 red coins before completion, another thing very common amongst the rest of the list. Number 4, Triathlon Speedrun 2.0, One Lap Version, by Popo. Yet another insane speedrun level. I'm sure you're starting to notice a theme with the top 10. Insane precision and the use of advanced mechanics with tight platforming. Each and every one of these speedrun levels needs to be carefully examined and dissected, a process that takes a lot more time than just simply running through a level. This one involves the use of the propeller suit, followed by a close encounter with death. Next, at number 3, is a 20 second long Japanese level by Poyo Papoyo, called 20 Seconds of Wawawa Sama's Level, called I Can't Stop Being Myself. This level is an extended version of another level, which forces the player to jump back and forth through the use of sideways springs. While not completely unpredictable, the spring movement is awkward to work around, and paired with the small size of the rooms, despite the entire level only being two screens wide, this level is all but simple with ultra-precise movements being needed to clear it. Just don't take too long to think about it. Number 2 is Welcome Extreme, 3 Lap, by Akuns FC. It's the only other SMB1 level remaining, and requires the player to run through a tight gauntlet of piranha plants. Three separate times. Not only does the level have an incredibly narrow timer, but halfway through there's a section that has fire spitting piranha plants bouncing on springs. Players estimate that the odds of the fire being shot at the right time is only about 30 to 40 percent, a chance which is repeated three separate times over the course of the level. So the chance of getting good RNG for a whole run is only between 2.5 and 6.4 percent, on top of the actual platforming, which is painful in its own right. This random element adds additional difficulty, only made worse by the tight timer. And finally, above every other level to complete, was Trimming the Herbs by Canadian player Ahoyo. Ahoyo had always had somewhat of an obsession with Super Mario World's bombs. He uploaded what's considered to be the game's hardest level, Bombs 5, but Trimming the Herbs was just little enough to fly under the radar. It's a level that requires the player to constantly drop and pick up the same few bob bombs to kill piranha plants, which then need to be frame-perfectly spin-jumped off of. Killing both results in an instant loss. A frame-perfect trick. This is paired with the player needing to achieve the perfect momentum to navigate around the saw blades between the plants. While it would only take about 20 seconds to complete, those 20 seconds would need to consist of complete perfection. As well as being the oldest, it's also considered by most to be the most difficult level left. Even some of the most talented players in the field believe that this level is out of their league. It has been attempted over 300,000 times without a single clear. 300,000 tries. 
and all they were looking for was 20 perfect seconds. Out of all of the remaining levels, it was the crown jewel, and everyone was interested in seeing not just whether it'd be beaten, but which of the top players would be the one to overcome it. Shortly after the publishing of the video, the top 10 would start to be cracked open. All of this starting with Happy New Year, when it was beaten by Yamada, overcoming its enemy spam and jumps without a second to spare. Less than four hours later, a crazy man flying through the air while spinning would fall to the hands of Chris speedruns. Only three and a half hours after that, Triathlon Speedrun 2.0 would be beaten by Fritzif. That would mark the completion of three levels in the top 10 beaten in one day. Things would die down. For about four hours. Because then, Norway, the player who had beaten Chaco Speedrun two weeks prior, would clear Einherjar. At this point, morale was at an all-time high. The 22nd level would be completed the very next day, beaten by Yotaku who was able to expertly navigate through this level with surgical precision, overcoming the janky physics of the springs in only 18 seconds. Notably, throughout this whole time, trimming the herbs continued to remain elusive, just out of reach to those who continued attempting it. Around this time, the beast started his attempts on the last dance, and Curb started grinding Last Hope. While these levels are being beaten at insane speeds, each and every one is taking tens of hours for one person to beat, only taking longer as the difficulty in levels increases. As the list continued to dwindle, many were theorizing what the final, uncleared level would be, many pointing to the last dance. But if you ask an expert, only one level stood out next to all the others. The only remaining Mario World level. The only remaining non-Japanese level. One of the only 20 second long levels. By far the shortest, but that makes it the most concentrated amalgamation of pain. It's explained well in this video by YouTube user Yoshi. One frame input to kill the plant and also re-grab the bomb. It has to be the first frame control jump, because if we go any higher, we're gonna die here. It's also worth noting that Yoshi believes the level may have been uploaded illegitimately, citing Ahoyo's sketchy history and the fact that the level was uploaded so quickly. Bombs 5 apparently took 5,000 hours to complete, and yet this ultra-precise level, which was made for a contest in 2017, was able to be beaten and uploaded in only about a month. Completing the level would take robotic levels of precision, but nonetheless, Five levels remain. I think tomorrow we're gonna beat it, for sure. I knew others were playing it as well, for instance Lil Curbs, so it was a race against time. From the moment I started it, I also knew it was gonna be my last clear for the team, and I really wanted to end with 10 clears in the final 100. I start by looking at the level in the course maker to see all the parts of a level. Once I have an idea of what the level requires to beat it, I start by practicing the end of the level. My thought is that if I can't beat the end of a level, I won't be able to complete the entire thing in a real attempt. For the first day since the beginning of the project, not a single new level had been beaten but this wouldn't be the last. Trimming the herbs was the last level standing. All they needed was perfection. All they needed to do was achieve the impossible for 20 seconds. On the 21st, someone hacked to clear onto the level, but because it was done illegitimately, it does not count. A painfully ironic twist of fate, as trimming the herbs, the level players spent thousands of combined hours attempting, was cheated all along. Ahoya would release a statement revealing that trimming the herbs itself was completed illegitimately by TASS. The story goes as follows. After five years since its unveiling, Ahoyo had finally gotten around to publishing Bombs 5, his magnum opus. But during his attempts at completing it, he would be unexpectedly cursed with a thumb injury, resulting in an early end to his Mario Maker career. At the same time, someone informs him of a cancelled project they were working on. A task tool able to function on the Wii U. He would use this tool to clear and upload Bombs 5. To reveal the task to the greater community, he planned to make it a spectacle. He organized a month-long event called PogChamp, where players would put together the most impressive 10-second levels, and then intentionally break his own rules to show off Mario Maker's first TAS-only level, trimming the herds. His plan was to use this level to unveil the TAS to everyone, 
only revealing it after players would start calling him out. But unfortunately, the level looked easier than it really was, and just so happened to slip under the radar completely. Years would go by, and still no one would know the truth about these levels. But while many would choose to discredit both of Ahoyo's cheated projects, it's important to know this distinction. Bombs 5 was designed to be a cool level for people to beat, while trimming the herbs was never even designed to be humanly possible. By their own rules, Team 0% had done it, the last dance really being the last dance. But many continued pushing to clear it anyways, the bounties continuing to pile up. After all, it was fitting. The movement dedicated to hunting first clears would end by beating a level that had never even been cleared by its original creator. An actual first clear. But trimming the herbs wouldn't go down without a fight. After being revealed as Tass, trimming the herbs would largely be left behind as people went on to celebrate Yamada's clear of the last dance. At the same time, the beast, Fast, Yoshi, and many other contenders would quickly lose motivation to clear the level. When a level is uploaded, a runner can constantly use the fact that it's been beaten before to motivate themselves, but now, whether it's beatable in time is up in the air. At this point, there were still a few that stuck around. Lil Curbs would continue throwing in some attempts, but the favorite to win was Sanix. Each and every day, he would post a new clip from his stream getting further and further into the level but his progress quickly came to a halt after getting to the tower section for the first time. As it turns out, to get the first coin you have to throw the bomb at a very specific time, and he was moving too quickly. To make any more progress, Sanix would have to reroute the level, still achieving the same inputs and momentum, but with slightly different timing. On the 29th of March, he would go a full stream without any noticeable progress. After moving so fast in terms of both progression and game movement, hitting a roadblock like this had the potential to demotivate a player into losing hope. But the very next day, he'd do this. Just one more play like that, and he would achieve perfection. As with anything, in the world of these incredible gaming achievements, people tend to only examine the highlights, the brief moment of success, while ignoring the journey needed to get there. But while many will only ever see the 20 or so seconds one person needed to complete the level, take one look under the surface and you could see the immense group effort this took to achieve. It's important to note that nobody's perfect, but on that day, in April 2024, for a fleeting, 20 second moment, when all of the cards were just right, and with enough research and practice, maybe someone could be. This was a level that had never been beaten, even by its original creator, but that was it. Even though it was Sanix who ultimately touched the axe, this project couldn't have been done without such a driven group of people behind it. From the organizers, to the strategizers, to the players themselves, to the audience cheering them on. Zero percent of Mario Maker's levels would go uncleared. The ultimate send-off to the ultimate 2D Mario game. With the servers down officially, we're beginning to see the rise of fan-run replacement servers. Pretendo is currently nearing completion. Once it's up and running to the public, we can hope to continue having access to these levels. Nintendo's abandonment left in the past, as the niche community it first appealed to would take matters into their own hands, and maintain the servers themselves. Mario Maker was a game built on defying expectations. In an era of copy-pasted New Super Mario Bros. games, it at very least took advantage of the formula to grant us the ability to make them ourselves. It was a game that touched the hearts of many, and despite some of that magic wearing off over time, Thanks to group efforts like Team 0%, we all got to relive the excitement all over again. Team 0% have now shifted their focus to Super Mario Maker 2, where levels harder than ever surely await their completion. And when that day finally comes, I'll be there. Will you?